Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Harvey, and I'll be your instructor for today. Today, we're going to be discussing handling objections and how that really pertains to your job as a sales manager and how you want to address your needs and services with our customers in the most meaningful and beneficial way. So let's jump right in. So we're going to talk about why customers object and why it's so important to understand intuitively what those problems might be. So the first and most important thing is fear of change. Let's call it what it is. No one likes to change. We all kind of like to stay status quo in our own little worlds and how we operate. So fear of change is very important to a customer. And how you overcome that fear of change is to be able to talk to our customer in a way that's meaningful. So that means we have to understand their needs, understand their hurry, understand their financial objectives, and most importantly, understand trust. Trust is the key element of really selling a customer. It's that rapport building process that we want to take on early on and get a good read on what our customer needs are so that we can overcome the four major objections. So there's two types of objections. One is called an early objection, and that might be in the form of something that comes to light very early on in your discussion with a customer. The first thing that we want to talk about is what that might represent. The most common that we see in the pest control industry is a, something to the effect of, I've used you before and I had a bad experience. Or maybe a friend of theirs or a family member has used them before and they had a bad experience. Now there's a couple different ways that we overcome this objection. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that when we're talking to the customer that we don't just gloss over that objection. We want to make sure that we understand it by asking some probing questions. First thing we need to do though, however, is to sympathize with that customer. Mr. Customer, I'm really sorry that you had a bad experience with us in the past. But let me understand, was that experience with Terminex itself, or was it with a service technician or a salesperson? Make sure that we're making that distinction so that the customer can start to build the case in their mind that the problem wasn't necessarily with Terminex, it may have been with a sales associate or a technician that came out and didn't do the job properly. The second thing that we want to talk about is the late objection. Now let's talk about an example of a late objection. Well, a late objection might be something that comes to light just before you ask for the sale. They might come to you and say, you know what, money really is a problem. Uh, we, we haven't really built in the finances to handle such a cost at this time. Chances are you missed a benefit or a feature, and that's why they're hitting you with that late objection. So now it's time for you as a sales professional to rewind, take that customer back, and figure out how we could build the best type of financing for that customer. And we know that there's a number of different ways to do that. So handling objections, do's and don'ts. Let's talk a little bit about that. Don't assume you've heard the objection before. For those of you who are new to sales, and show of hands, let me just get an idea of how long you've been in sales. If you've been in sales less than two years, raise your hand. Okay, most of you. Five years or longer? Okay. And how about 10 years plus like myself? Perfect, so there's a couple of you out there. I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> do practice active listening. So what do I mean by that? Active listening is absolutely critical. As salespeople, we have a tendency to really wanna to talk to our customers, really wanna share all the knowledge that we have in our heads, but the problem with that is we're not listening to our end user. If you wanna create a great customer experience, you have to listen to your end user and understand what their needs and wants are. Remember, your customers are people, and people have hopes, wants, and dreams. And they want their kids to go to college just like you do. They wanna take those nice vacations every year. So obviously, listening to them and understanding what motivates them is gonna be the key to move them along. We don't wanna sound scripted either. We wanna make sure that we're talking fluently to our customers, that it sounds very genuine and heartfelt, and we're working with them in a way that's meaningful to them. There's no cookie cutter approach to sales. Every prospect is different. We also wanna practice. And what do I mean by that? Show of hands, how many people in the room have played sports in the past? Okay, most of you. How about a musical instrument? Okay, some of you. So, Here's the situation, I play piano, one of the things I've done since I'm a little boy, and here's the thing. The first time I sat at a piano and I worked with my grandfather, I didn't have a great understanding of how to play a piano. It took lots of practice to build those competencies and those soft skills. Well, sales is no different. When you're working with customers, you have to practice your sales pitch. So practice, 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 practice to the most common objections. That's gonna help you be very fluent when you're talking to your customers, but most importantly, 
that's going to get you through those hard situations. Don't avoid a objection from a customer. If a customer is objecting, we want to make sure that we're handling that in a meaningful way. Otherwise, you're always dealing with unresolved issues. And this even goes back to basic interpersonal skills. We want to make sure that we don't put anything to rest. I call it don't go to bed angry. That's my general rule. We want to make sure that we talk to our person that we're dealing with and really have a good comprehension as to what their chief concerns are. Don't avoid the hard questions. Face them head on. Have some empathy and understanding. That's so important. We're humans. People have problems. We're there to provide solutions. I've said very often in my 30 years of selling, I've never sold anything to anybody. I've always just provided solutions. So here's the four step steps. We want to reaffirm or clarify. We want to acknowledge. We want to use types and, and answers. And we also want to confirm. So let's talk about those things. We want to talk about the who's, what's, where's, and how's. So we're gonna ask clarifying and reaffirming questions by saying something to like to the effect that we're gonna repeat back something that the customer said. We're gonna acknowledge those things either in writing or in person by using our technology, either our cell phones or iPads. We're gonna make sure that we're type confirming answers so that our service technicians who are actually gonna come out and perform the service has the availability to look back on notes and understand. And we're going to ask confirming questions to our customers so that they understand that we understand. Clarify why. Well, in order to clarify something, the reason why we want to do that is we want to get what the real objection is. We want to understand the root cause of what their objections are. We also want to avoid answering the wrong types of objections. And we definitely don't want to sound confrontational. Many times we have nine or 10 prospects in a given day. And by the 10th prospect, you're tired or you're not working as well. I've always recommended is understanding what type of person you are is very important. If you're a morning person, that's when you should see your customer base, when you're most energetic. If you're an afternoon person, do the same conversely. So we also wanna buy some time when we're working with our customers and take some natural pauses in dialogue. That's very important. When you take a natural pause, you're giving them an opportunity to think, you're also giving yourself an opportunity to come back and handle that objection. Shorten your talk time, increase theirs, and you're gonna see the sales come in. Next thing you wanna do is acknowledge your prospects. Very, very important. Remember, prospects are people. Confirming to your complete and specific understanding of an objection is key. We wanna narrow the focus to an answerable scope. We wanna minimize excess talk time, be very specific and empathize to what their problems are. Remember, if they have pests in their home, there's gonna be some natural apprehension, there even may be some embarrassment. Make sure you empathize. Determine the type of objection. So what do I mean by that? Is it a virtual objection or is it a real objection? Chances are it's a virtual objection. Maybe it's an RFI, it's a request for more information, or perhaps it's just a misunderstanding or some type of a drawback with the communication channel. It's very important that when you talk to your customers, you realize it's a, it's a virtual problem or it's actually a real problem. Confirm and clarify. Most importantly, don't overthink. As salespeople, sometimes we take things out of context. We overthink situations. We wanna make sure that we're asking the right types of questions, open-ended questions, and then close the question off and move to the next topic. Don't leave things out. Be very sure that what you're saying isn't redundant or unnecessary. It's very important. And when you're dealing with your customers, that you're very specific about the details and how the subject matter is going to get performed so that they understand the service. When you do that, you put yourself in a situation where you're controlling the dialogue and most importantly, you're handling those objections before they become real problems. So let's use the four steps. We're talking about clarifying, acknowledging, type of answer, and confirmation. So this is to gain an understanding of each objection. We're gonna show some empathy with our customers. We're gonna clearly answer those objections and confirm that the objection no longer exists. So what do I mean by that? We're gonna ask our customer, Mr. Customer, are you okay with what I just said? And does that make sense to you? That's what I call a clarifying question so that they understand that you understand that that's no longer an issue. So 
there. So there's some major objections out there. This is one of them. It's called, I'm happy with my program and I'm happy with my current supplier. So how we're gonna handle that question is very simple. You're gonna say something like, I understand that you're happy with your current supplier and I appreciate your loyalty. Here's a list of my current customers who felt exactly the same way you do and now I was showing them I could help them and now they're loyal customers with, with me. Does that sound okay for you, Mr. Customer? And then move on. So here's a group activity that we're gonna do after the break, but I wanna leave some time for some Q&A. As a group, we're gonna brainstorm some objections that you may hear. We're gonna take a few minutes to think of all those. I want you to write them down on a board. We have the whiteboard set up on the side of the room. We also have some separate stalls that you can handle early objections and late objections, so you can have it in two different buckets on how you wanna approach this as a group. I want you to come up with some responses and I want you to role play those responses. And then make sure that you handle the objection using empathy, clarity, and isolate and respond. That's the most important thing. So let me repeat that. We're using empathy, we're clarifying, we're isolating, and we're responding to the objection. All right, perfect. So let's open up the floor for any question that you may have, and we'll address those concerns.